Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim Schiffers. I'm the CEO of Parsha Belita Group, the overall market leader in the German online dating market. I run the business together with my co-MDs, Henning Rönneberg and, and Mark Schachtel. We operate two brands. Parship is the inventor of online matchmaking in Europe, like Volkswagen, the car. Parship is the online matchmaking service. On the other hand, Elite Partner has been positioned from the start um, as a more upmarket brand. It's our service for academics and sophisticated singles. It's our Mercedes, the best or nothing. After many years of, of fierce competition between the two brands, with also changing number one and number two positions, we have been able in the last year to bring the two companies together under the umbrella of Parship Elite Group. As a group, we now make a turnover of more than 100 million euros at a profitability rate of greater 20 percent. And also, besides the acquisition of Elite Partner, we have been engaged in quite some deal activity over the past two years. We first sold the business from founding investor Holzbrink Digital to Oakley Capital in order to then, after the successful integration of Elite Partner, to sell a majority stake to ProSiebenSat1 just over a month ago. Behind the business performance and behind the financial performance of the business is the success that we have in making people happy and bringing them love. And the Germans amongst you will know, because you hear it on TV quite often, that every 11 minutes a single falls in love via Parship, which eventually, if things go completely right, leads to babies being born. 20 babies per day are being born to Parship couples, if you want to put that differently then um, every Parship employee has been responsible for 50 babies in the last year, Everything, something every midwife would be proud of. Elite partner being very differently positioned with a more upmarket focus. Let's have a quick look at the market. Geronimo already gave a description beforehand. We look at the market in two dimensions. On the one hand, your intention for using an online dating service, and on the other hand, the price that you're willing to pay. And that basically leads to three segments. The classical online dating segment, you go to an online data when you're open in your intentions, when you flirt, you date, and you see where that leads you to. When you're more fixed in your intention, it depends on the kind of intention that you have. If you want to head straight to the bedroom, then you go to a casual data. If it's about serious relationships, if you want to find the love of your life, then you come to the likes of ourselves. The market, market obviously hasn't always looked like that. So some 15 years ago when we started, it wasn't that busy. There was Parship in the matchmaking segment, Friend Scout at that point of time, now Love Scout in the dating segment, and quite a number of players in the casual dating segment. Then as it always happens in emerging markets, more players came into the scene, on the scene, generating growth in the market. The first more disrupting move took place with casual, casual dating becoming a more professionalized segment which very much attacked the online daters from below, not so much an effect on ourselves. But then things became very competitive in our space. eDarling came on the market with strong backing, attacking very aggressively. Elite partner with their anyhow very strong positioning, pushing, pushing in the market with strong TV advertising. Mm, and Parship at that point of time showing a little bit of weakness. Uh, one had embarked on a pretty large attempt to internationalize the business, the platform was a bit outdated, the platform wasn't that strong anymore. So Parship got a little bit into, into difficulties, losing the number one position, also becoming loss-making at that point of time. So we embarked on a major turnaround activity, about which I will tell you more in half a moment, which was very successful, leading to, leading to, to growth again, making, having us regain the number one position in the matchmaking segment, but also becoming the overall leader in the, in the online dating segment. This was somehow helped by another development, and you will hear more about it, I guess, afterwards in the, in the talk. Um, casual so social dating apps um, coming onto the markets, Lavoos and Tinder of this world, that really had two effects, again attacking the, the online daters, but on the other hand also broadening the appeal of the market, which was very helpful for us because we could, we could make use of that, broadening also the appeal of our brand, attacking the online daters from below. So overall, a very successful story that we have been, been writing here. 
Um, E-Darling, as Geronimo was telling you beforehand, looking more at the internationalization of the business, and that eventually enabled us to acquire Elite Partner, the competitor of many years, and consolidating the market. But this consolidation was only possible because we managed a successful turnaround. And I would like to tell you a little bit, of the, a little bit about the ingredients for that turnaround. One, with Holzbrink Digital, we had a very courageous investor that continued to believe in the business, that continued to invest, despite all the ups and downs that we had gone through. The team then set out, um, the team around Mark Schachtel then set out to develop a best-in-class technical platform. And best-in-class technical platform didn't mean like nice features here and there. Yeah, you can easily get lost in that when you're in the dating business, but really focusing on the core value drivers of the business in terms of product and platform. That was supported by a very clear marketing and media strategy with brand marketing being at the core of it all. When you're operating in the online dating segment, then basically everyone can be part of your target group. And if you're not part of our target group today, you might be part of our target group tomorrow because tonight you split up with your partner. Therefore, it's very important for us to be top of mind at every given point of time, and therefore we communicate the brand in the market with a very significant, broad media approach. And all of that was held together by a rigid focus, very much driven by, by our CEO, Henning, Henning Rönneberg. So rigid focus meant two things. On the one hand, really concentrating on the German-speaking markets, um, doing, doing away with the broad internationalization approach, doing also away with add-on business. But it also meant one thing. It really meant focusing the whole organization on the key value drivers, making sure within the organization that everyone understood what the key value drivers were, constantly and openly communicating about them and educating the team about them. And this made that a very successful story. At the end of it all, Holzbrink decided to divest the business um, because it wasn't really part of their core, Holzbrink focusing on trade publishing and science and education. So that was a logical step. And um, our in investor, 100% investor at that point of time, now 50% investor, Oakley Capital, came on board. And with them, we then directly embarked on the consolidation of the market. How did we achieve that? From the start, we had a very clear alignment with them and throughout the whole process. So in our management presentation, we talked about strategic directions, and one of them was the consolidation of the German-speaking market via the acquisition of Elite Partner. And Oakley directly followed up on that with us. Even before closing, we had started the discussions. So some two months after closing the Oakley transaction, we had done the acquisition of Elite Partners. So this was only made possible by this very clear alignment. We then applied a rigid and comprehensive integration plan. And there we were a little bit lucky to be unlucky because the Cattell authorities took four months to approve the transaction. So we actually had a lot of time to prepare things in detail. Part of this preparation was the decision to go for a maximum integration of the teams. The logic behind it was that at the end of the day, we are operating completely identical business models with very similar approaches, with very similar features, and with completely overlapping geographies. Therefore, we decided to put the Parship senior management in charge and basically completely integrate under, and the teams underneath not engaging in, into potentially longish best of both worlds discussion. The same held true for the technical platform where we decided to develop one common technical platform on which we can run both services, run them in a differentiated and separated fashion, i.e. separated databases, differentiated features, but still one common system behind it. And the team did an amazing job because just a year after closing the transaction, we now launched the platform, the new platform, just two days ago. And also overall, we can make uh, ticks in all the boxes as far as the integration is concerned. The team is completely integrated now. We're operating out of one location, technical platform implemented, and all the cost synergies that we plan to realize have been realized. That eventually convinced uh, ProSieben Sat1 that, uh, as I said, a month ago, bought a majority stake in, in Parsha Belita Group. Prosima Dines, a partner with whom we have worked for many, many years, because TV is very important for us. We are amongst the 
top 10 TV players in number of spots in the German market. So at the end of the day, it's a relationship that we are continuing. So in summary, um, we have always operated in a very competitive market and I assume this is going to continue to be that way. But with our two strong investors, Oakley and ProSiebenSat1, with the two brands that are very clearly positioned and differentiated with the strong technical infrastructure, the strong team, we feel very well prepared for the future and uh, are looking forward to the things to come. Thank you very much for your attention.